Welcome friends to this 13th lecture of multivariable calculus in which we are going to study extreme values. Myself, Professor Sanjay Sinsole, Mahatma Gandhi Vidya Mandir, Art Science and Commerce College, Manmad. In the previous lecture, we have learned the method of solving problems using chain rule, homogeneous functions, and Euler's theorem. The objectives of this lecture are to study the maxima and minima of functions of two variables the critical points and saddle points of functions of two variables and the second derivative test to determine the critical points and saddle points. First of all, let us see what are local maximum values and local minimum values. If f of x, y is a function of two variables and a is one of the point in its domain, then that function f of x, y is said to have local max maximum at that point a b if f of x y is less than or equal to f of a b then x y is near to a b that means a function f of x y of two variables is said to have local maximum at a b if there exists a neighborhood if there exists a neighborhood about a b such that for every point x, y in that neighborhood, the value of function at x, y is always less than or equal to f of a, b. Means f of a, b is always greater than or equal to the value of function at each and every point in that neighborhood of a, b. If such a neighborhood about a b exists, then we say that a function has local maximum at that point. Okay. Here the details are given as this means that f of x y is less than or equal to f of a b for all points x y in some disk with center a b. This some disk is a nothing but the neighborhood about a b some disk with center a b means neighborhood about a b and if there exists such a neighborhood about a b in which the values of function are always less than or equal to the value of function at a b then the value of function at a b becomes maximum in that neighborhood so it is called as local maximum at a b the number f of a b is called as local maximum value similarly a function of two variables f of x y is said to have local minimum at a b if f of x y is greater than or equal to f of a b when x y is near to a b means again a function is said to have local minimum at a b if there exists some neighborhood about a b such that the values of functions in that neighborhood are always greater than or equal to the value of function at a b means the value of function at a b is less than or equal to each and every value of function at the point in that neighborhood so this value becomes minimum and hence we call that function has a local minimum at the point a b and the number f of a b is called a local minimum value. Now, what are absolute maximum and absolute minimum value? See, a function f of x y of two variables has an absolute maximum. Absolute means overall. Absolute maximum at a b if f of x y is less than or equal to f of a b for all points x y means in this case that maximum is not local maximum it is overall maximum and it is called as absolute maximum that f of a b is greater than or equal to the value of function at each and every point in its domain means this f of a b becomes overall maximum called as the absolute maximum a function of two variables has an absolute minimum at a b if f of x y is greater than or equal to f of a b for all points 
x y in the domain of f okay in this case f of a b is less than or equal to all points of function all values of function at each and every point in its domain so it becomes overall minimum called as absolute minimum theorem if f has local maximum or minimum at a b and the first order partial derivatives of f exist there then fx at a b means partial derivative of f with respect to x at the point a b is equal to 0 and f y at a b is equal to 0 that is again partial derivative of f with respect to y at the point a b is is equal to 0 means if f has a local maximum or minimum at a b then its partial derivative with respect to x as well as with respect to y at the point a b are 0 see if we denote that function f of x y at the point y is equal to b that is f of x b as g x because when we check f of x y as at y is equal to b then that function f of x b becomes a function of only one variable x so you can denote it by g of x as a function of single variable x so let g of x is equal to f of x b if f has a local maximum or minimum at the point a b as this f of x b as a single as a function of single variable x is equal to g of x g also has local maximum or respectively local minimum at the point x is equal to a okay because here b is kept as it is b is same only that value a is in the place of x so when we call f has a local maximum or, or minimum at the point a b means this function has local maximum or minimum at x is equal to a which is equal to gx so we can call this function of one variable gx has local maximum or minimum at the point x is equal to a and as by Thomas theorem for a function of one variable gx is to have local maximum or minimum at x is equal to a if g dash a is equal to 0 ok so g has local maximum or minimum at is is implies g dash a is equal to 0 but what is g dash g dash is nothing but the total derivative of gx with respect to x it is the derivative of gx with respect to x at the point x is equal to a okay, g dash a is nothing but the derivative of gx with respect to x at the point x is equal to a so to get g dash x we have to differentiate left side with respect to x and similarly right side with respect to x okay but at the right we have a function f which is already a function of two variables x and y so to get its derivative with respect to x we have to differentiate it partially with respect to x and therefore we get g dash x is equal to partial derivative of fxb with respect to x c x but in g dash a it is derivative of g dash x, x at x is equal to a it means derivative of gx with respect to x at x is equal to a so it becomes equals to partial derivative of f xb with respect to x at x is equal to a so it becomes fx at a b fx a b means g dash a is equal to 0 indirectly implies fx at a b is equal to 0 and his first part half part is proved here in the similar way by considering gy is equal to f of a1 means by fixing x is equal to a the function f of xy 
becomes f of a y as a function of single variable y, you can denote it by g y. g y is now function of single variable and again containing the same procedure f has local maximum or minimum at point a b it means g y has local maximum or, or minimum at y is equal to b at y is equal to b as it is a function of single variable but for max theorem it implies g dash at b is equal to 0 g dash b is equal to 0 and that g dash is nothing but the derivative of g y with respect to y so that g dash b is equal to derivative of g y with respect to y at y is equal to b it indirectly equals to der partial derivative of f a y with respect to y at y is equal to b so it is f y at a b and so g dash b is equal to 0 indirectly implies f y at a b is equal to 0 and hence it is proved if f has local maximum or minimum at a b and the first order partial derivative of f exists at the point a b then that both partial derivatives of f at a b must be equal to 0. Next topic is critical point it is also called as stationary point. A point a b is called a critical point or stationary point of function f of two variables x and y if its both partial derivatives with respect to x as well as with respect to y at that point a b are 0 means f x at a b is equal to 0 and f y at a b is equal to 0 or if one of these partial derivatives does not exist that means a point a b in the domain of a function f of two variables x and y is said to be critical or stationary point if the both partial derivatives of f with respect to x as well as with respect to y at the point a b exist and are equal to 0 or one of these partial derivatives does not exist and what is saddle point the saddle point of a function are those critical points which are neither local maxima nor local minima see we have previously learned if a point in the domain is either local maxima or local minimum it's both partial derivatives the pars uh, both partial derivatives of function at that point must be equal to zero but it doesn't mean when a when both partial derivatives of function at some point equal to zero implies that point is either local maximum or minimum okay when the point is local maximum or local minimum then the both partial derivatives of function at that point must be zero converse is not true means when both partial derivatives of function at some point in the domain are zero it doesn't mean that point is local maximum or local minimum when such point have when such at such point both the partial derivatives are zero then that point is either local maximum local minimum and if it is neither lo local maximum local minimum then it is saddle point okay means when both partial derivatives of function at some point in its domain are zero that point is called as critical point or stationary point then there are three possibilities either that point is local maximum or local minimum and if it is neither local maximum nor local minimum then it is saddle point see example let f of xy is equal to x square plus y square minus 2x minus 6 y plus 14 find the local minimum of, local minimum of f if x is to find local minimum 
or local maximum first of all we have to find the critical points in the points at which both the partial derivatives of function vanishes become zero so first of all find the partial derivative of f of x y with respect to x it will be f x at x y is equal to partial derivative of x square is 2 x plus partial derivative of y square as it is independent of x that partial derivative will be 0 minus the partial derivative of 2 x with respect to x is 2 minus partial derivative of 6 y with respect to x is 0 again partial derivative of 14 with respect to x are 0 because these two terms are independent of x so we will get f x at x y is equal to 2x minus 2 similarly the partial derivative of f with respect to y see here we get f x at x y is equal to 2x minus 2 partial derivative of f x y with respect to y the partial derivative of x square with respect to y is 0 as it is independent of y partial derivative of y square is 2y again minus 2x and 14 both these terms are independent of y so their the partial derivative with respect to y are 0 and the partial derivative of minus 6y with respect to y is minus 6 into 1 so minus 6 therefore fx at xy is equal to 0 and fy at xy is equal to 0 these conditions for critical points are reduces to 2x minus 2 is equal to 0 and 2y minus 6 is equal to 0 now this 2x minus 2 is equal to 0 implies 2x is equal to 2 so x is equal to 1 and this equation 2y minus 6 is equal to 0 implies 2y is equal to 6 and so y is equal to 6 now we get 1 3 is the only point in the domain of f that satisfies f x at x y is equal to 0 and f y at x y is equal to 0 that means this is 1 3 is the only point in the domain of f at which both the partial derivatives of f become 0 so 1 3 is the only critical point of f now we have to decide whether it is local minimum local maximum or saddle point for that we are going to rewrite this function f of x y here we can collect the terms of x together terms of y together and making them perfect square that means f of x y is equal to x square minus 2x x square minus 2x to write it as a perfect square we have to add 1 here x square minus 2x plus 1 which can be written as x minus 1 that x square similarly by collecting y square minus 6y together to convert it into the perfect square we have to add 9 here so we will get y square minus 6y plus 9 which can be converted into y minus 3 back square <coughs> now when we add 1 to write this perfect square and add 9 to write this perfect square means totally we have add here 10 to writing both the perfect squares but we have the constant term 14 plus 14 so it will be reduced by 10 means the constant term becomes 14 minus 10 is equal to 4 that means this f of x y can be written in this form now you can observe this x minus 1 bracket square cannot be negative this term cannot be negative because it is square term square of a real number similarly y minus 3 bracket square is a square of real number it also cannot be negative is these both terms are greater than or equal to 0 and when we add in this greater equal 0 term the number plus 4 this total term is always greater than or equal to 4 this total term is greater than or equal to 4 ok so we can call this function is said to have look Local minimum or this function is said to have minimum value for this function is said to have look minimum minimum value for because this term is always greater equal zero this term is always greater equal zero and when we add this greater equal zero term by plus four this total term f x y is always greater equal four so four is the minimum value of function 
and that four arises when we put x is equal to one and y is equal to three. Means when we put x is equal to one, y is equal to three, we will get the minimum value of function f of x y. And so this one three is the minimum uh, minimum absolute minimum of f. So you can call it as local minimum also. See, every absolute minimum is a local minimum, but every local minimum need not be absolute minimum. Okay. So, <coughs> therefore, f of one three is equal to four is a local minimum, and in fact, it is the absolute minimum. Okay. Second example: Let f of x y is equal to y square minus x square. Find the local minimum of x if it exists. Similar as previous, to find the local minimum, we have to find the critical points. For that, we have to equate both the first order partial derivative of x and x y with respect to x and with respect to y is it with equal to zero. The function f of x y is equal to y square minus x square has partial derivative with respect to as f x at x y is equal to zero minus two x because y square is independent of x its partial derivative with respect to is zero and the partial derivative of x square with respect to x is two x similarly so it will be minus two x similarly partial derivative with respect when we find its partial derivative with respect to y the partial derivative of y square with respect to y is two y and the partial derivative of minus x square with respect to y is zero because it is independent of y so we get f y at x y is equal to two y for the critical points where we Equate both these first order partial derivative is equal to zero, so we we'll get minus two x is equal to zero and minus two y. Uh, sorry, plus two y is equal to zero. In that we will get x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero. Means origin zero zero is the only critical point of function f of x. Now we have to decide whether this zero zero is local maximum, local minimum, or third order. Okay. See, we can observe easily the Value of function f of x y at the point zero zero is zero square minus zero square is equal to zero. Okay. If all other values are, if all other values of function f are less than zero, you can call it as a look. It has a local maximum or absolute maximum. And if all other values of function f Are greater than zero, you can call it as local minimum or absolute minimum. As it is the only critical point, if it is local maximum, it will become absolute maximum. And if it is lo become local minimum, it will be indirectly becomes absolute minimum because it is the only critical point of function f. Now see f of x zero. When we substitute y is equal to zero, we get f of x zero is equal to zero square minus x square, that is minus x square, which is always negative for every positive or negative value of x. For every non-zero value of x, we get f x zero always negative. If f of one zero is minus one, f of two zero is minus four, f of three zero is minus nine, and so on. Means this function have Negative values for points on x-axis other than origin. Okay. Similarly, when we substitute x is equal to zero, we get f of zero y is equal to y square minus zero square. That is y square minus zero is equal to y square, which is always greater than zero. So it it is positive for all points on y-axis. Means this function has positive as well as negative values on respectively. Y axis and x axis. And therefore, this f of zero zero is equal to zero is neither minimum local minimum value nor local maximum value. And hence, we can say that for every disk with center zero zero, we means if we take any neighborhood above zero zero, that neighborhood contains points on x axis as well as points on y axis. When we take any neighborhood about zero zero, that neighborhood must contain 
infinitely many points on y axis and infinitely many points on x axis means there exist infinitely many points in the every neighborhood of 0 0 at which function has positive and function has negative values therefore this f of 0 is 0 is equal to 0 is neither local maximum or local minimum value so here we have written every disk with center 0 0 this means neighborhood contains points where f takes positive values as well as points where f takes negative values therefore this value can't be an extreme value extreme value means neither local minimum or uh, local maximum so f has no extreme value so that 0 0 becomes several points second derivative test to determine local maximum local minimum or several points here suppose the second partial derivative of f are continuous on a disk with center a b again this is a neighborhood of a b and suppose that the first partial derivative of f with respect to x at that point a b and the first partial derivative of f with respect to y at the point a b both are zero that is a b is a critical point of f then we have to find some terms like d is equal to d for discriminant d is equal to d at a b is equal to f x x at a b into f y y at a b minus f x y at a b bracket square what is f x x at a b it is the second partial derivative of f with respect to x x at the point a b this f y y at a b is nothing but the second partial derivative of f with respect to y y at the point a b and this f x y at a b is nothing but the second partial derivative of f with respect to x and then with respect to y at the point a b if this difference is greater than 0 this d is equal to f x x at a b into f y y at a b minus f x y at a b circuit where this difference is greater than 0 but this f x x at a b is greater than 0 then this point a b becomes local minimum point and f of a b is the local minimum value okay if this difference and f x x at a b both are positive then function has the local minimum at the point a b if difference is greater than 0 but f x x at a b is less than 0 then that function has local maximum at a b means when the difference is greater than 0 then and then that point can be local maximum or local minimum further if difference is greater than 0 and f x x at a b is greater than 0 then function has local minimum at a b and if difference is greater than 0 and f x x at a b is less than 0 then the function f has local maximum at a b while if the difference is less than 0 then directly you can conclude that a b is neither local maximum point or local minimum point means that f of a b is not local maximum or local minimum in this case we can call that point a b as a saddle point example find the local maximum and minimum value than saddle points of f of x y is equal to x raised to 4 plus y raised to 4 minus 4 x y plus 1 to find local maximum minimum or saddle points first of all you have to find the critical points of function f for that we have to find the first order partial derivative of f x y with respect to x as well as with respect to 1 and equate both the partial derivatives is it, uh, with 0 ok its first order partial derivative with respect to x becomes 4 x cube the derivative of x raised to 4 with respect to x is 4 x cube the derivative of y raised to 4 with respect to x when we take partial derivative this is independent of x so it is derivative becomes 0 minus 4 times y into x the derivative of x with respect to x becomes 1 so it, its partial derivative with respect to x becomes minus 4y into 1 that means minus 4y and the partial derivative of 1 that is constant its derivative with respect to x is 0 so indirectly the partial derivative of fxy with respect to x that is fx xy becomes 4x cube minus 4 times y Similarly, the partial derivative of f x y with respect to y becomes 0 plus 4 y cube minus 4 x into 1 
plus 0. So it will be 4y cube minus 4x. Now we have to equate both these first order parcels is equal to 0. We will get 4x cube minus 4y is equal to 0 and 4y cube minus 4x is equal to 0. From, uh, in the both the equations, you can take 4 outside from both the terms on LHS and by dividing both the sides by 4, we will get x cube minus y is equal to 0 and y cube minus x is equal to 0 means x cube is equal to y and y cube is equal to x. Now, we get x cube is equal to y by substituting y is equal to x cube. In this second equation, we will get x cube bracket cube minus x is equal to 0 means x is to 9 minus x is equal to 0. Okay, so we will get two equations y is equal to x cube and x is to 9 minus x is equal to 0. If we take x common from these two terms, you will get x into bracket x raised to x minus 1 is equal to 0. As the product of two terms is equal to 0, at least one of them is 0, either x is equal to 0 or x raised to x minus 1 is equal to 0. If x is equal to 0, this y is equal to x cube, it is also 0 because y becomes 0 cube is equal to 0 and when When x is equal to 0, this y also becomes 0, so we will get x is equal to y is equal to 0. And when x is to x minus 1 is equal to 0, it can be factorized as, as x is to 4 minus 1 into x is to 4 plus 1 is equal to 0. Again, as product of two terms is 0, at least one of them is 0. So either x is to 4 minus 1 is equal to 0 or x is to 4 plus 1 is equal to 0. But x is to 4 plus 1 is equal to 0 cannot be possible when we think about the real values of x because x raised to 4 plus 1 is equal to 0 is possible only when x raised to 4 is equal to minus 1 ok but the fourth power of every real number or even power of every real number is always a non-negative therefore in this product x raised to 4 minus 1 into x raised to 4 plus 1 is equal to 0 this x raised to 4 minus 1 must be equal to 0. So, this becomes x is equal to y is equal to 0 or y is equal to x cube comma x raised to 4 minus 1 0. y is equal to x cube and x raised to 4 minus 1 is equal to 0. Again, x raised to 4 minus 1 can be factorized at x square minus 1 into x square plus 1 is equal to 0. Again, in this product, at least one of the factor is 0, but x square plus 1 cannot be 0 because x square plus 1 is equal to 0 implies x square is equal to minus 1 which is not possible for every real value of a. So, in this product x square minus 1 x square plus 1 is equal to 0 x square minus 1 should be 0. So, we will get x is equal to y is equal to 0 or y is equal to x cube and x square minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, x square minus 1 is, can be further factorized as x minus 1 into x plus 1. So, <coughs> here x is equal to y is equal to 0 or y is equal to x cube and Either x minus 1 is equal to 0 or x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, x minus 1 is equal to 0 when x is equal to 1 and x plus 1 is equal to 0 when x is equal to minus 1. When x is equal to 1, this y is equal to x cube gives us y is equal to 1 cube is equal to 1. And when x is equal to minus 1, this y is equal to x cube becomes y is equal to minus 1 cube is equal to minus 1. That means, we get 3 points here as x is equal to y is equal to 0, x is equal to y is equal to 1 and x is equal to y is equal to minus 1. So, 0, 0, 1, 1 and minus 1, minus 1. These are three critical points of given function f of x, y. Now, we have to decide, decide which of them is local maximum, local minimum and saddle point. So, we have to use second order, second order derivative test. For that, we have to find d, dxy, that is fxx at xy times fyy at xy minus fxy xy bracket square. Okay. Here, fxx xy means the partial derivative of fx with respect to x at xy. As we have already find out, fx at xy as 4x cube minus 4y. 
फोर एक्स क्यूब माइनस फोर एक्स फोर वाय वेन वी अगेन डिफरेंशिएट इट पार्टियल विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एक्स वी गेट द डेरिवेटिव ऑफ फोर एक्स क्यूब बिकम्स the derivative of 4x cube becomes 4 into 3x square that is 12x square and derivative of minus 4 watt with respect to x becomes zero so it will be just 12x square again to find fx y we have to differentiate that same partial derivative fx with respect to y instead of x now see that first partial derivative of fx y with respect to x Was 4x cube minus 4y, but the 4x cube is independent of y, so its partial derivative with respect to y becomes zero. And minus 4y minus 4y have partial derivative with respect to y as minus 4 times 1, so it is equal to minus 4. And to find the second order partial derivative of f with respect to y, y, we have to differentiate f y with respect to y. The partial derivative of y was 4y cube minus 4x. The derivative of minus 4x with respect to y is obviously zero, and the derivative of 4y cube with respect to y is 4 times 3y square, so it will be 12y square. Therefore, dx y becomes f x x x y times f y y at x y minus f x y at x y bracket square is equal to 12x square into 12y square minus 4 minus minus 4 square. This minus 4 square is minus uh, minus 4 square is 16. So it will be 144 x square y square minus 16. Now we have to calculate the value of d at 0 0. It will be 144 into 0 minus 16. That is minus 16 less than 0. And we know that when d is less than 0, that point is always saddle point. So this origin is Saddle point. Whatever, whatever will be the value of f x x. This value is negative, so zero zero is the saddle point. Zero zero is the saddle point of f. Now we are think about minus one minus one. F of minus one minus one is equal to one forty four times minus one square minus one square minus sixteen. This is The square of minus one is one. Square of minus one is one. One into one into one forty four is one forty four minus sixteen is equal to one hundred twenty eight greater than zero. Now there is possibility of lo local minimum and or local uh, maximum for the point minus one minus one. For that you have to decide what will be f x x at minus one one minus one. Okay, the value of f x x at x y is 12x square. So the value of f x x at minus one minus one is 12 minus one square. Minus one square is one. So it will be 12 into one is equal to 12 greater than zero. When f x x is greater than zero and d is also greater than zero, then this point becomes local minimum. See, when d is less than zero, point is always saddle point. When d is greater than zero, then that point may be local maximum or minimum. Then d is greater than zero and f x x is also greater than zero. Point is local minimum. And then d is greater than zero, but f x x is less than zero. Point becomes local maximum. So now minus one minus one is local minimum of point of x. And then local minimum value you can calculate from here as f minus one minus one is equal to minus one raised to four plus minus one raised to four. Minus four times minus one into minus one plus one. This minus one raised to four becomes one. Minus one raised to four becomes one. This minus one into minus one is one. One into minus four that will be minus four. So it will be one plus one minus four plus one. That means minus one. Okay. That local minimum value will be minus one. For critical point one one, d one one will be in the similar fashion. We we'll get one twenty eight greater than zero. And again, f x x x one one will be same twelve greater than zero. Means we can say by second derivative case, function has local minimum at the point one one also. So f of one one is the local minimum value, and this is also have same value minus one.
find the shortest distance from the point 1 0 minus 2 to the plane x plus 2 y plus say is equal to 4. That means we have to find the minimum value of distance function. Finding the distance of point 1 0 minus 2 to the plane x plus 2 y plus z is equal to 4. We denote that distance function by dx y z. Now as dx y z is the distance of a point x y z on this plane to the point 1 0 minus 2. Okay. Means what we have to do, we have to find the distance of each and every point on the plane to this point 1 0 minus 2. Okay. And then we have to take the minimum among that distances. That is nothing but the shortest distance. Means we have to take the minimum value of that function. So dxyz will be the distance of a point xyz on the plane from the point 1 0 minus 2. It can be calculated by using the distance formula in R3. Okay. So it will be under root of x minus 1 bracket square plus y minus 0 bracket square plus z minus minus 2 that is z plus 2 bracket square. Okay. Here, where what will be z? z will be 4 minus x minus 2y. So, you have to replace here z as 4 minus x minus 2y so that this function of 3 variables will be produced as a function of 2 variables. So, dxy, this d doesn't mean discriminant, okay? This d is a distance function, dxy is equal to d of xy, you have to replace z by 4 minus x minus 2y, it is equal to under of x minus 1 bracket square plus y square plus, again you have to replace z by 4 minus x minus 2y plus 2 bracket square, it is equal to, now you have to take squaring on both sides and denote that square d square by f of xy, now this is the function you have to minimize. This is the function you have to minimize f of x y is equal to d square is equal to x minus 1 bracket square plus y square plus this 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 minus x minus 2 y bracket square. Okay. Now we have to minimize the function f of x y. For that we have to find the critical points of f of x y. Differentiated partial with respect to x, we will get f x at x y is equal to 2 times x minus 1 plus this is independent of x, so it is derivative with respect to x is equal to 0 plus 2 times 6 minus x minus 2y into the partial derivative of 6 minus x minus 2y with respect to x. Yes, 6 minus 2y, both are the terms independent of x, so their derivative with respect to x becomes 0 and the derivative of minus x will be minus 1. So, you have to multiply this 2 times 6 minus x minus 2y by minus 1, partial derivative of minus x as minus 1. So, it becomes minus 2 times 6x. 6 minus x minus 2. By simplifying it, we will get 2x minus 2 minus 12 plus 2x plus 4y. So, it will be 4x, 2x plus 2 that is 4x, this 4y and this minus 2 minus 12 that is minus 14. Similarly, if y at xy it is equal to 2y minus, see here the derivative of x minus 1 bracket square with respect to y is 0, derivative of y square is 2y, derivative of this will be 2 times 6 minus x minus 2y into, you have to multiply this 2 times 6 minus x minus 2y by the partial derivative of this composite part. But 6 minus x is independent of y, its so derivative will be 0 and the derivative of minus 2y with respect to y will be minus 2. So, it will be 2 times 6 minus x minus 2y into minus 2, it will be minus 4 times 6 minus x minus 2. When we simplify, it will be 2y minus 24 plus 4x plus 8y. 2y plus 8y becomes 10y, this minus 4 into minus x becomes 4x and this is minus 24. So, we will be 4x plus 21y minus 24. Now, we have to equate this both partial derivatives with 0, we will get 4x plus 4y minus 14 is equal to 0 and 4x plus 10y minus 14 is equal to 0. When we solve this equation simultaneously, after Subtracting second equation from first, we will get 4x minus 4x cancel. 4y minus 10y will be minus 6y. Minus 14 plus 24 will be plus 10. 
सो सिक्स वाई इक्वल टू माइनस टेन वाई इक्वल टू माइनस टेन बाई सिक्स और माइनस फाइव बाई थ्री दिस इज सिक्स वाई माइनस टेन वाई इज इक्वल टू टेन बाई सिक्स मीन्स फाइव बाई थ्री ओके बाय रिप्लेसिंग द फर्स्ट इक्वेशन ओके दिस फोर एक्स प्लस फोर वाई माइनस फोर्टीन इज इक्वल टू जीरो टू रिप्लेस वाई बाई फाइव बाई थ्री it becomes 20 by 3 so we will get y is equal to 5 by 3 and 4x plus 20 by 3 minus 14 is equal to 0 so we will get 4x is equal to see here 20 by 3 minus 14 can be written as 42 by 3 so it will be minus 22 by 3 when we shift that minus 22 by 3 towards right you will get 4x is equal to just 22 by 3 okay and when we divide that 22 by 3 by 4 we'll get 11 by 6 so we'll get x is equal to 11 by 6 y is equal to 5 by 3 that means 11 by 6 5 by 3 is the only critical point of function f of x y okay now we have to decide whether it is local maximum local minimum or several point for that we have to take the fx x okay the first order partial derivative of f with respect x was 4x plus 4y minus 14 is equal to 0 when we differentiate it with respect to x we will get only fx x is equal to 4 <coughs> fy y was 4x plus 10y minus 24 is equal to 0 when we differentiate it with respect to y we will get fy y is equal to 10 And that 4x plus 4y is, is uh, minus 14 is equal to zero. When we differentiate it with respect to y, we will get fx y is equal to 4. In this way, we get d x y as a, uh, instead of d x y. If we uh, observe uh, all these values are constant. so the values of all these second order partial derivatives at 11 by 6 and 5 by 3 11 by 6 5 by 3 are also same now directly you can find the value of d discriminant at the point 11 by 6 5 by 3 at 4 into 10 minus 4 square okay fx x into f y y minus fx y square so it will be 40 minus 16 is equal to 24 greater than 0. D is greater than 0, and if x x is also 4, that means positive greater than 0. So this point is local minimum point. Okay, means that distance function has minimum value at the point 11 by 6, 5 by 3, and that minimum value can be calculated as the shortest distance from the point 10 minus 2 to the plane. This is uh, given by d. This d is nothing but the distance formula you have taken uh, previously. D 11 by 6, 5 by 3 is equal to under root of 11 by 6 minus 1 bracket square plus 5 by 3 bracket square. Here we have x minus 1 square. X is nothing but 11 by 6 minus 1 bracket square plus y square means 5 by 3 bracket square plus this is 4 minus x minus 2y plus 2. That is 4 minus 11 by 6 minus 2 times 5 by 3 plus 2 bracket square. When you simplify, it will be under root of 25 by 36 plus 25 by 9 plus 25 by 36. So it will be under root of 75 by 18, or you can call it as 5 by root 6, because this 75 by 18 can be simplified as 25 by 6 and. The square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 6 is root 6. So this is the shortest distance of point 10 minus 2 to the plane x plus 2y plus z is equal to 4. A rectangular box without a lead is said is to be made from 12 m of cardboard. Find the maximum volume of such a box. Let the length, width, and height of a box in meters because here. We have given the unit of measurement as meter. 
dx, x is the length, y is the width, and z is the height of that box. Then the volume of the box, if it is equal to length into width into height, that will be x y z p is equal to x y z. Now this is the function of three variables. We have to reduce it into the function of two variables only. Uh, what we have given that rectangular box without lid is set is to be made from 12 meter cardboard. Means the surface area of that box will be 12 meter. We can express V as a function of just two variables x y by using the fact that the area of four sides and the bottom that is called the surface area box. It is equal to 12 meter. So the bottom is made up of length and width, so its area will be x1 and the lateral sides, the lateral sides, two la opposite lateral sides are made with length and height and so their areas will be xz and as in, uh, such two lateral sides have area 2xz. Similarly, two opposite uh, lateral sides have uh, sides as width and height, width y and height z. Therefore, their areas will be yz and hence their total count will be, will be 2yz. Therefore, the sum of these areas of lateral sides and bottom will be 2xz plus 2yz plus xy is equal to 0, which can be written as z is equal to 12 minus x y upon 2 times x plus y. Okay. You have to take here z comma, you will get 2 z times x plus y plus x y is equal to 12. You can shift this x y towards right, you will get 12 minus x y divided by 2 times x plus y. It is nothing but z. You have to replace this value of z in the formula for volume that will be reduced to v is equal to x y times 2 12 minus x square upon 2 times x plus y. It will be 12 x square minus x square y square upon 2 times x plus y. Now, this is a function of two variables only x and y. Now, to find the maximum value of this function, we have to first of all find the critical points of v. For that, we have to differentiate it partially with respect to x. We will get this, the above v by the above x, partial derivative of v with respect to x as you can use your quotient rule. In the quotient rule, what you have to do? You have to take the square of the denominator at the denominator. At the numerator, you have to take the denominator into the partial derivative of numerator with respect to x minus numerator into the partial derivative of denominator with respect to x. So, it will be vx at x y is equal to double by double x is equal to here. You have to take the square of denominator. This 2x plus y denominator into derivative of numerator, derivative of numerator, partial derivative of numerator with respect to x. The derivative of 12 x y with respect to x is 12 into 1 into y, that is 12 y. The derivative of x square y square minus derivative of x square y square with respect to y will be minus 2 x y square minus the numerator into derivative of denominator. Denominator was 2 into x plus y. Its derivative will be 2 into 1 plus 0, that is 2. After simplifying this, you will get the above v by dy x is equal to minus 2x square y square plus 24 y square minus 4x y cube upon 4 into x plus y by x square. So, indirectly it will be the above v by dy x is equal to y square times 12 minus 2x y minus x square upon 2 times x plus y by x square. Similarly, the above v by dy y can be calculated as x square times 12 minus 2x y minus y square upon 2 times x plus y by x square. Now, to find the critical points, you have to equate both these first order partial derivatives uh, with 0 and you will get y square times 12 minus 2xy minus x square is equal to 0 and x square times 12 minus 2xy minus y square is equal to 0. But the product is equal to 0, you can only at least one of them is 0. So, we will get either y is equal to 0 or 12 minus 2x, 2xy minus x square is equal to 0. And either x is equal to 0 or 12 minus 2x square minus y is equal to 0. So, first order where we will get x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. Okay. But then 
either x is equal to 0 or y is equal to 0 that box cannot be made okay because x is width uh, x is length of box and y is width of box any of them is 0 cannot be cannot form the rectangular box so these two conditions are invalid so you have to discard them and just you will get 12 minus 2x minus y square 12 minus 2x square minus x square is equal to 0 and 12 minus 2x square minus y square is equal to 0 and these equations have 12 minus 2x square as same pattern so these two equations are equal to 0 upon only x square is equal to 0 and y square is equal to 0 that uh, okay sorry when we uh, subtract these two equations we will get 12 minus 2xy uh, minus 12 minus 2xy cancel so we will get x square minus y square is equal to 0 so x square is equal to y square so we will get y is equal to x or y is equal to minus x but y is equal to minus x is not valid because x and y both are always positive so we will get only y is equal to x and when we take y is equal to x that 12 minus 2xy minus x square is equal to 0 and 12 minus 2xy minus y square is equal to 0 gives us 12 minus 2x square minus x square means 12 minus 3x square is equal to 0 that means 3x square is equal to 12 x square is equal to 4 x is equal to 2 so y is also equals to 2 we get x is equal to 2 y is equal to 2 to find the value of z Uh, first, so we get the value of x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2 and 2 2 is the only critical point which may be local maximum of x y. In this case, z becomes 12 minus x y upon 2 times x plus y is equal to 12 minus 2 times 2 upon 2 times 2 plus 2. It will be 12 minus 4 is equal to 8, 2 times 4 is equal to 8 is equal to 1. So, the rectangular box made of cardboard of 12 meter for the maximum value is to be the box with length 2 meter, width 2 meter and height 1 meter and its maximum value will be x y z is equal to 2 into 2 into 1 is equal to 4 meter cube thank you if you like this video please click on the like symbol and share this lecture to all the other interested persons and for the a lot of next lectures please log in with your valid gmail id and click on the subscribe subscribe notification you can also visit to youtube.com slash c slash mathematics education this is my channel link for any query please write to mr sanjay at the right gmail.com